This program is brought to you by Emory University. For most of its history, the game of baseball has been one of America's most successful melting pots. Baseball, says novelist Philip Roth, was a kind of secular church that reached into every class and region of the nation and bound us together in common concerns, loyalties, rituals, enthusiasms, and antagonisms. Baseball made me understand, says Roth, what patriotism was about. For nearly all of the 20th century, baseball was open to men with last names like Rizzuto, Greenberg, Drabowski, and Clemente. And it opened doors for countless thousands of men and women who took pride in the accomplishments of people whose names were spelled and sounded like their own. If all public and personal records of arrivals of immigrants on the North American shores were somehow to be destroyed, it would be possible for future scholars to reconstruct the history of American population demographics just by looking at the rosters of professional baseball. In the first two decades of the 20th century, there were Germans, Irish, and East Europeans, players with names like Wagner, Marquard, Lejoy, McGraw, or Kowaleski. These, in turn, were followed by waves of immigrants from Southern Europe. The Yankees roster in the years immediately following World War II included infielders named Crosetti, Locadello, and Rizzuto. The patrolling center field was the great DiMaggio. By the end of the civil rights era, major league rosters were full of names like Gibson, Mays, Aaron, and Gwynn. And more recently, lineups have bold Latin American or Asian shadings. Currently, more than a quarter of major league roster players are Latino and more than 20 Japanese, South Korean, or Taiwanese players are spread among half of major league teams. Curiously, the great majority of Asian players on MLB rosters are pitchers. Part of the attraction of the game for underclasses of American society is largely practical, less a matter of eager acculturation than of realistic economics. It was possible to make more money, a great deal more money, playing baseball by, than by pursuing any other occupation likely to have been on the radar of people of Irish, German, Italian, Czech, African, or Puerto Rican ancestry. In 1950, the last names on the Brooklyn Dodgers lineup reflected more than a hundred years of immigration history. Rowe, Ferrillo, Labine, Snyder, Robinson, Cox, Pafco, Reese, Campanella. I don't think it necessarily discredits the game or its players to acknowledge that money and status were important elements of baseball's appeal to immigrants. Acculturation, such as Roth describes, was simply a byproduct, although you could say that ultimately it was the game's most important and lasting effect. Not that baseball gladly welcomed men with names that ended in vowels or who had dark skin. In the first half of the 20th century, numerous light-skinned African Americans played Major League Baseball only by masquerading as Cubans, which in the eyes of the men who ran organized baseball made them minimally acceptable to racist theory. For more than 50 years, the game of baseball, like much of the rest of American society, simply excluded blacks. A few African Americans did play on white baseball teams during the early years of the game, but by the end of the 19th century and during the first half of the 20th, as you know, African Americans who wanted to play baseball for money had to form, and did form, professional leagues of their own. Robert Peterson recounts the era of segregated baseball in his history of the Negro Leagues. Only the ball was white. In fairness, baseball must be credited with being among the first of American institutions and businesses to live up to the claims for equality made in the Declaration of Independence. It's worth remembering that organized baseball was integrated in 1945 when Jackie Robinson signed a contract with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Robinson walked on to Brooklyn's Ebbets Field on opening day of 1947 baseball season, April 15th, but his appearance on that day was the natural result of moral machinery set in motion some years earlier. Baseball's inclusion of black players came a full three years before Harry Truman signed an executive order integrating the armed services nearly eight years before the United States Supreme Court in Brown v. Board of Education ended 58 years of separate but equal instruction of black and white children in America's public schools. And it occurred almost 20 years before Congress passed into law the Voting Rights Act of 1965. 
In this case, at least, it can be said that baseball behaved better and behaved better earlier than almost any other segment of American society. Monty Irvin, another Negro League player who followed Jackie Robinson to Major League Baseball and also to Baseball's Hall of Fame, said as much. These are his words. Baseball has done more to move America in the right direction than all of the professional patriots with their billions of cheap words. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.